Hello everyone. Let's talk about how association meeting planners can address cognitive biases in generative AI integration. Now, generative AI is great for event planning, for member engagement during events, for preparation for member events, registration, for content creation, for marketing events, automated scheduling, lots of tools. And many associations are exploring it. And I've worked with a number of associations that do so, given keynotes for them, talked about it, and I've seen that a number of them struggle with cognitive biases in integrating generative AI. And I'll tell you about what these cognitive biases are. These are systematic errors in our thinking. How do we think? How do we approach generative AI integration in planning events for associations? So what are these challenges? These are systematic thinking errors that stem from how our mind is wired. Unfortunately, our mind is not really wired for the modern environment. It's wired for the ancient savanna environment. When we lived in small tribes of 50 people to 150 people, which is not how we live right now, but we make mistakes based on the fact that our mind is wired in that way. And that has some problems in shaping how members perceive and trust or distrust new technologies like generative AI. One of the biggest challenges in these cognitive biases is called the status quo bias. Now, in the Savannah environment, we were an environment that didn't really change much. It was an environment where the major changes were the changes of the season, spring, summer, fall, winter, and back again. And so when the situation changed, it was a bad thing. And our survival was quite precarious. So we had a strong temptation tendency to push back against any changes that were not cyclical changes of the season. So our intuitions are not wired to accept change as well. We have fear of the unknown. We are rooted in what's familiar. So we prefer current practices over new changes, even though these new changes might be better for us. And that plays out in the resistance to generative AI. And that is a challenge in the modern world. So modern world, we have many more changes, whether it's the rise of the smartphone, whether it's the 2008-2009 fiscal crisis, the pandemic, rise of hybrid work and remote work. All of these sorts of things have really impacted association meeting planning. And many folks have difficulties with accepting this new reality, just like they have difficulty with accepting the new reality of generative AI which is great again for tools like automated registration, personalized marketing for events, but many association members and even staff and even some leaders don't like that. They are comfortable with traditional methods and they don't want these new tools. They're concerned about complexity, learning new system, disrupting workflows, lack of human touch, all of these sorts of things. So the challenges of status quo bias for generative AI adoption is that it slows down and can even prevent the adoption of generative AI tools. It's a real missed opportunity for improved event planning and member engagement, which of course improves also both the effectiveness but also cost efficiency. So you can do so all of these things in a more cost effective way. To address the status quo bias, you really need to share clear data-driven results of the benefits of generative AI adoption. For example, increased attendance at events or in decreased efforts to get all the member registration, scheduling, customized marketing to members at events. So all of these sorts of things are crucial. So again, you want to use data for this and you want to provide training and workshops both for your members as a whole and for the staff at your associations. You want to encourage a culture of innovation where both members and staff can provide ideas of how to integrate generative AI. And that gets people more excited and more involved and helps address the status quo bias. So one association for with which I worked and I gave a keynote for it, it successfully reduced resistance by involving members in pilot projects. We talked about that and that helped improve buy-in and people were inspired to engage in it because for these pilot projects and through these member input and staff input that increased buy-in and led to smoother adoption. 
That's one example. That's what status quo bias. Another challenge is related called the loss aversion. It's the fear of potential losses outweighing the value of potential gains. So whatever we have, we are reluctant to lose it. This is not the same thing as the unknown, but it's the holding on to what we have and preference for that. The comfortable, the familiar desire to not change our behaviors, change our practices, to adopt new unknown things that might again be quite a bit better, but they're not something with which we're familiar. So there's concerns, for example, with generative AI about adopting a new thing, something that people are not familiar with, except especially association meeting planners and members who have been part of the association for a long time and who are not so comfortable and familiar with digital tools especially. So that can be a challenge. So there's fear-based decision-making that prevents investment into learning generative AI tools and integrating them into association work. And honestly, the staff, especially not so much members, are afraid of job loss. So that is another reason that I see loss aversion playing a significant role in causing association staff, especially to fear generative AI adoption. So what you want to do to address loss aversion is share success stories of how generative AI has helped associations the staff member, staff and members, so both the staff of the association and the members of the association with, especially for staff, to make sh making sure that there's no job loss. Or if being transparent, if there's a possibility of job loss, talking about how the people who will lose their jobs are, potentially lose their jobs, are going to be the ones who don't learn how to use generative AI, AI effectively. But honestly, there's no good reason for association staff to lose their jobs if they learn how to use generative AI effectively, because you can always improve personalized member engagement and content marketing to your members and increase their participation. So both their re re registrations at your events and of course, more broadly in your association that increases the dollars that your association brings in. And as a result, you have more money for payroll, which is the major expense for us, the major expense for associations. And you want to address these fears also, of course, by offering upskilling and development opportunities to make sure that staff members are able to learn about this. And you want to offer town halls and newsletters to help members learn about how your association will be using generative AI. So I gave a keynote to a large association to its members and then training to its staff members, training to its staff, to employees, to educate them about the benefits of generative AI, which helped reduce fear and resistance. Now, talking about fear and resistance, another cognitive bias we want to talk about is the empathy gap. And that refers to difficulty in understanding other people's emotional responses to a situation. So people whose emotions you don't share. So let's say you're an association executive director or the director of meeting planning, you might be excited about using generative AI because it's going to be more effective and efficient, but you might not be sufficiently empathetic with the kind of impact it has on your staff or fears and anxieties among members around privacy concerns or about whatever is happening where they're working. Let's say you're an association of engineers and their company might be integrating generative AI and they're worried about their company integrating generative AI and now their association is integrating generative AI and they might be worried about that too. So insufficient attention paid to their fears and concerns, their anxieties, their stress levels around generative AI adoption. So what you want to do is make sure to have a lot of feedback around generative AI adoption, two-way feedback. That means not simply sending them messages, which is what you want to do around more loss aversion and around status quo bias, but you want to get feedback from them. So open channel of communication is crucial. Use surveys, focus groups, feedback sessions, town halls to understand their concerns. Another good thing is to have mentorship programs so that people who are early adopters of generative AI within your association, both staff and members, can educate others about the benefits of generative AI that they're finding. So those tech savvy members. 
and you want to train your association leaders, both the volunteer leaders and the ex executive director, co director of meeting planning and so on, to communicate changes empathetically to their staff member, to their staff and to the broader association members alike. So for example, I worked with an association that used focus groups, surveys and town halls to identify emotional barriers to adopting generative AI and we created clear tailored support programs to help the employees of the association and the members of the association be more comfortable after we heard their concerns. So we got their concerns and we made sure that they're heard and we acknowledged their concerns that helped them feel heard and that helped move the process forward and eventually integrate generative AI more effectively. So, those are the three cognitive biases I want you to be aware of. Again, status quo bias, loss aversion, and empathy gap tend to be the major challenges I see when I give presentations for associations or consult for them or both on how to address generative AI adoption challenges. And so these cognitive biases tend to be major blockers and you can adopt the specific strategies I outlined here to address each of these challenges to make sure that you move forward and you can more effectively adopt generative AI. So make sure to do an assessment on which of these cognitive biases might be the biggest problems for your association. Loss aversion, status quo bias, empathy gap, and focus on targeting each one with whatever strategies are most relevant.